get off the beach, get off the beach, raced through my mind. Once I felt land under my feet, I wasn't as scared as I had been coming across the reef. My legs dug up the sand as I tried to rise. A firm hand gripped my shoulder. Oh God, I thought, it's a nip who's come out of a pillbox. I couldn't reach my K-bar. Fortunately, because as I got my face out of the sand and looked up, there was the worried face of a Marine bending over me. He thought the machine gun burst had hit me and he had crawled over to help. When he saw I was unhurt, he spun around and started crawling rapidly off the beach. I scuttled after him. Shells crashed all around, fragments tore and whirred, slapping on the sand and splashing into the water a few yards behind us. The Japanese were recovering from the shock of our pre-landing bombardment. Their machine gun and rifle fire got thicker, snapping viciously overhead in increasing volume. Our Amtrak spun around and headed back out as I reached the edge of the beach and flattened on the deck. The world was a nightmare of flashes, violent explosions, and snapping bullets. Most of what I saw blurred. My mind was benumbed by the shock of it. I got up. Crouching low, I raced up the sloping beach into a defilade. Reaching the inland edge of the sand just beyond the high water mark, I glanced down and saw the nose of a huge black and yellow bomb protruding from the sand. A metal plate attached to the top served as a pressure trigger. My foot had missed it by only inches. I hit the deck again just inside the defilade. On the sand immediately in front of me was a dead snake about 18 inches long. It was colorful, somewhat like American species I had kept as pets when I was a boy. It was the only snake I saw on Peleliu. Momentarily, I was out of the heavy fire hitting on the beach. A strong smell of chemicals and exploding shells filled the air. Patches of coral and sand around me were yellowed from the powder from shell blasts. Up and down the beach and out on the reef, a number of Amtraks and ducks were burning. Japanese machine gun bursts made long splashes in the water as though flaying it with some giant whip. The geysers belched up relentlessly where the mortar and artillery shells hit. I caught a fleeting glimpse of a group of Marines leaving a smoking Amtrak on the reef. Some fell as bullets and fragments splashed among them. Their buddies tried to help them as they struggled in the knee-deep water. I shuddered and choked. A wild, desperate feeling of anger, frustration, and pity gripped me. It was an emotion that always would torture my mind when I saw men trapped and was unable to do anything but watch as they were hit. My own plight forgotten momentarily. I felt sickened to the depths of my soul. I asked God, why, why, why? I turned my face away and wished that I were imagining it all. I had tasted the bitterest essence of war, the sight of helpless comrades being slaughtered, and it filled me with disgust. A large white post about four feet high stood at the edge of the defilade. Japanese writing was painted on the side facing the beach. To me it appeared as though a chicken with muddy feet had walked up and down the post. I felt a sense of pride that this was enemy territory and that we were capturing it for our country to help win the war. One of our NCOs signaled us to move to our right out of the shallow defilade. I was glad because the Japanese probably would pour mortar fire into it to prevent it being used for shelter. At the moment, however, the gunners seemed to be concentrating on the beach and the incoming waves of Marines. 